So let's uh, begin our lecture. Previous lecture, we just introduced the idea of modeling of physical systems, um, and practically all mechatronic systems are physical systems. And we decided to model these using a graphical approach or bond graph. And we were discussing about the approach of bond graph. We had just initiated the discussion. Now, a power transaction through a bond. Uh, this is a power bond. It looks like a harpoon arrow. And actually, it carries two informations. Uh, unlike a signal bond, which is just a single full arrow, but carries information of only one variable. This carries information of two variables. Uh, one variable is called effort. And at any time t, it is represented by et, e of t. And the other variable is called flow. And at any time t, it is represented as f of t. So you have these two variables effort and flow uh, that are necessary whenever you represent a power transaction. In fact, uh, the product of these two variables is actually power. And power is a scalar. So you have effort multiplied by flow and it gives you power at that instant of time. Now, in different energy domains, you have different meanings for effort and flow. Uh, in the electrical domain, uh, we could say that uh, effort is voltage and uh, flow is current. And if you take the product of these two, voltage into current, you get power. Uh, in the mechanical domain, we can say force multiplied by velocity. Force is effort and velocity is flow. So force multiplied by velocity, uh, it's power. You have pressure in, in um, hydraulics, pneumatics, we make use of pressure and volume flow rate. So P is pressure, it represents effort and Q represents flow. And the product of the two is again power. In the thermal domain, we have temperature and rate of change of entropy. We have uh, in rotational systems, torque and angular velocity. And you can see that the product of these variables is power and power is a scalar. So you have for any energy domain, for any uh, system, in any energy domain, you have these two variables of power. So if you wish to represent the transaction of power, you will certainly have these two variables, an effort variable and a flow variable. Now there are elements, there are a set of nine elements in bond graph, which we make use of in addition to the power arrow to the power bond and using that we are able to model practically all the physical systems in nature. We have two sources, a source of effort and a source of flow. They are represented by SE and SA. We have three elements, an inertia element, which is represented by I, a stiffness element represented by C, and a dissipation element represented by R. And we have junctions, uh, two junctions, a one junction and a zero junction. We also have uh, two very important elements first one of which is the transformer represented by the symbol TF and 
the other one is a gyrator represented by the symbol gy so you can see we have a total of nine elements and that's all that you need to model physical systems in any energy domain you need the power bond and you need these nine uh, elements now there is one more important aspect of physical systems that is cause and effect and that's called causality uh, causality is extremely important in physical systems and you will see why it's actually the cause effect relationship between elements and elements or subsystems of a system and uh, it also can be said to be the input output rela relationship between subsystems now suppose you have a subsystem a and you have a subsystem b you have the transaction of power between them so we'll represent it using a power bond like this naturally uh, two variables one is effort and one is flow uh, both are involved because there is a transaction of power between these two subsystems now in physical systems the the concept of physical systems is such that if the end a decides the signal of effort if it decides what should be the signal of effort the end b will decide what should be the signal of flow the information of effort if it is decided by a the information of flow will be decided by b it's only then that a power transaction can take place between a and b in any physical system both these variables of power can never be determined by the same subsystem so this is a very important aspect of physical system dynamics that both these variables of power cannot be decided by the same subsystem a cannot decide both effort and flow b cannot decide both effort and flow a can decide one of the variables of power and it has to accept the other variable of power b can decide the other variable of power and it has to accept the other variable so this is what we call as the idea of cause and effect idea of causality now you can uh, have a have a uh, a simple argument for this uh, which can possibly be based on logical reasoning uh, suppose if um, you Uh, let's say if effort uh, is force you are applying a force on a mass let's say and the mass is deciding the velocity what should be the velocity so uh, both the force as well as the velocity cannot be decided by you either one of the variable can be decided by one of the subsystems so if you are deciding the force the mass will decide the velocity and suppose if this were not to be true if this would not have happened if you were able to decide both the effort and the flow that means suppose you apply you apply a force and you also decide what should be the velocity then in that case you could always say that well um, with the application of a very little force i am going to obtain very fast velocities but you know that that never that is never possible because the laws of physics do not allow it it cannot be a physical system 
if that happens uh, you must have seen that uh, these kind of things happen only in animation in uh, maybe tom and jerry cartoons or things like that where uh, without with, with practically no effort uh, there is uh, extremely rapid movement so uh, the matter is very clear that only one information only one subsystem of which is a party in the transaction of power can decide one of the variables of power the other variable is decided by the other subsystem now there are how does uh, how do you represent this idea of causality in bond graph graphically uh, in fact uh, this figure also makes uh, another very important uh, it also um, clarifies another aspect of physical systems you see in in middle in the middle we have this power bond okay if we did not want to use this power bond we could have still represented the dynamics we could still have represented the power exchange between a and b but then if we made use of signal arrows for representing this exchange of power we would need two informations so we would need two signal arrows one for effort the other for flow but in bond graph we don't need that we just need one power bond and uh, that is going to carry both these informations so that's the reason why the power bond is different from a signal bond what you have represented here this is a signal bond this is a signal bond okay and it represent it carries the information of only one variable so here this bond uh, this signal arrow carries information only of effort this signal arrow carries information only of flow okay now how do we represent this causality in physical systems this is done using what we call as a causal stroke in fact this was a significant contribution by henry painter a very simple elegant contribution uh, by henry painter so let's say that we have one possibility that is uh, we have an interaction a physical system interaction between subsystems a and b and effort is decided by a and received by b and flow is decided by b and received by a in this case the effort to the flow receiving end is subsystem a and the effort receiving end is the subsystem b we identify this uh, by just placing a stroke this stroke here we call as a causal stroke and it is placed on the end which receives the effort automatically the other end receives the flow so this is a very simple way of uh, understanding which is the subsystem which is going to receive effort and which is going to receive the information of flow in fact this causal stroke is independent of the direction of power that is shown over here it's it's not it has not uh, nothing to do with power but it has to do with the exchange of information the direction of the exchange of information the other possibility is here where we have the effort a receiving uh, the the subsystem a receiving effort and the subsystem b receiving flow so we have effort here and we have flow here uh, the end which receives the effort we place a stroke here which we call as a causal stroke and that's because uh, according to the notation the subsystem which receives the effort it uh, uh, the causal stroke has to be placed there automatically the other end that is subsystem b will receive flow so i think now the idea of effort and flow 
and the idea of the direction of this information this is clear to you uh let's proceed further uh, we have power and energy variables now let's have a look at these we know that power at any time t is equal to the product of effort at the time t and flow at the time t now if we integrate the effort with respect to time uh then we can integrate it from an initial time ti to a present time t and we make use of a dummy variable here uh, e tau so we make use of tau as a dummy variable in place of time because we wish to integrate it up to the present time so effort time with respect to time uh, and we can say that this is equal to let's say this integral is equal to p at t minus p at t r now this uh, particular uh, va variable which we have we denote as momentum it's called generalized momentum so when you integrate effort you get a generalized momentum consequently uh, if you take the derivative of this if you take the derivative of momentum you will get effort at the time t if you take the derivative of momentum at the time t you will get the effort at the time t in the same way if you take uh, if you integrate flow with respect to time t uh you have flow with respect to time <coughs> please give me a moment yeah you have flow with respect to time and uh the integral of flow with respect to time is qt minus qti and you have the it, you have this variable that is the integral of this being called as a generalized displacement now why do we call these as generalized momentum generalized displacement the reason is very simple it's because in different energy domains these momentum and these uh, momenta and displacements they have different meanings say in the electrical domain the uh, generalized momentum means a flux linkage in the mechanical domain it could mean the linear momentum or the angular momentum in the electrical domain the displacement would be charge uh, in the mechanical domain it could mean the deformation or the displacement okay so it's called it's therefore it's called a generalized displacement and just like the previous case the derivative the time derivative of the generalized displacement at any time gives you the flow at that particular time if you just differentiate this you will get this so this is about power and energy variables now if we write power as a product of effort and flow you could also write this power as a time derivative of energy energy at that time energy being transacted at that time now if you integrate this power with respect to time uh, you will get you can express the energy differential like this and if you integrate it you can integrate in it in two ways again so you will have uh, the deriv the integral with respect to energy it will be e at t minus e at ti okay uh, ti being the initial time and t being the present time and that is going to be equal to the integral of this product of effort and flow uh, at the time tau 
with respect to tau and integrated from ti to t this uh, integral can be written as um, you can now place in place of effort you can write it as rate of change of momentum and keep the flow part as it is and uh, that will be flow multiplied by dp okay if you work this out it's very simple those of you uh, all of you are aware of integration and how this can be done so the limits also would change uh, you will have momentum at the time ti to the momentum at the time t so when you integrate this uh, energy you will get get it as a change in energy from the initial time can be written as an integral of flow with respect to the momentum okay it can be written like this it can uh, so this this integral is actually change in the kinetic energy momentum is a variable which is associated with kinetic energy okay uh accordingly the other side we have the same integral uh, now instead of writing effort as rate of change of momentum we can write flow as rate of change of displacement generalized displacement and here we can write this as integral from qti to qt effort with respect to q so this is depending upon the generalized this integral is with respect to the generalized displacement and it is called the change in potential energy it gives us a change in potential energy so the rate of so the rate of uh, uh, in fact the change in energy uh, through this method gives you the change in the potential energy but here you are dealing with displacement okay or uh, position here you are dealing with momentum so this is kinetic energy uh, let's take um, a simple system a simple mechanical system and uh, try to understand how we can construct its bond graph model uh, this is just representative i am yet to explain to you the grammar of this uh, graphical uh, approach once we do that things will be very easy for you and then you'll be able to model any physical system dynamics for any system in any energy domain so let's say we take this simple mechanical system it's a very simple system it's very commonly used especially in the study of vibrations okay uh, this system has a mass here and a spring damper combination in this manner and the other end is connected to a, a fixed end uh, you may say it's fixed to the ground a force f is applied on it and the force can change uh, for the moment we have assumed the stiffness of this spring to be k and the damping to be r and the velocity of the mass given by v at the time t it's the rate of change of the displacement of this mass with respect to some datum here let's say with respect to this fixed end so if you construct the bond graph for this uh, i'm going to explain to you many uh, examples how it is done but right now even though you may not understand it uh, please uh, try to follow what i'm saying we start with a one junction and a one junction is used to represent flows usually all the bonds connected to a one junction have the same flow so this one junction is representative of the flow that is the velocity of this mass we are considering motion only in this direction okay along this line uh we have the inertia of this mass we write it as i and uh, the mass is m the inertia element i is made use of and the parameter associated with it is m 
uh, we connect the two with a bond because this mass moves with the velocity v then we have uh, the force that is being applied we will take it as a source uh, we apply this force and uh, it is applied on the mass which is moving with the velocity v now the other side is fixed uh, so the the deformation the rate of deformation on the other side that is uh, given by this spring we make use of the c element c stands for compliance it is the inverse of stiffness and so we write this as k inverse so k is the stiffness parameter and inverse of that and we assign uh, the same velocity across the spring because the velocity across the ends of the spring is also the same and here finally we have the damper and the velocity across the ends of the damper also is the same so we have this structure wherein power comes in from here from this side here and it goes a part of this power goes to change the momentum of this mass pass part of this goes to change the energy of the spring and part of this power gets totally lost in dissipation so uh, let us number this uh, these bonds we number them just to identify them there is no uh, such hard and fast rule for numbering you can number them arbitrarily you can even give them names labels so we take this as label 1 2 3 4 we have numbered the bonds this is just for identification uh we place the causal stroke here now why i have placed it here i'll explain to you in our subsequent lectures so we have a source it determines the effort so this end receives the effort Uh, this i element we place the effort here the causal stroke comes here the causal stroke comes here now in this one junction you have uh, for this one junction you have a causality like this uh, don't worry about the causality aspect now because i'm going to explain to you what should be the causality of the junctions and the elements in uh, shortly in our uh, subsequent lectures so you have uh two variables one is the momentum associated with this i element and you have another variable uh, another state variable which is the generalized displacement or the displacement associated with the c element so these two variables now you are putting in effort into the system f then you are uh, you are uh, changing a part of this effort is also going here to change the momentum of this inertia a part of that goes uh, a part of that uh, in the stiffness the force that is exerted by the spring and a part in the damping force opposing force okay so you have the efforts these efforts have been written in blue uh for every bond uh we have also the flow here now i have taken the flow v which is the velocity and if you multiply momentum change with the velocity you will get power the power which is going into changing the momentum of the system so you have here the flow variable the flow is actually in terms of the state of this element it's just momentum upon mass this is a linear relationship and so because it's a newtonian relationship so it's very simple the velocity is equal to momentum upon mass likewise for um, 
because it's a one junction all the bonds that are connected to it will have the same flow now you can see that uh, this is the effort receiving end so naturally this will be the flow receiving end and flow has been decided by this i element so uh, here you have the uh, the the flow that is v which will be the same as this uh, only one bond is supposed to bring in the information of flow uh, into a one junction and that has been done by this i element consequently all the other bonds will accept it so here you have a v here a v and here a v so now the transaction of power all the variables of power are clearly indicated here so you are putting in a power which is f into v the power that is uh, going into changing this momentum is p1 dot into v which is given as p1 dot into p by p1 by m the power that is going uh, changing the uh, the potential energy of this is kq2 multiplied by v the power that is changing uh, that is get, getting dissipated is rv multiplied by v so you have a complete idea of the transaction of power that is taking place in this system now let's take an electrical system a simple electrical system and in this system uh, we have a voltage source we have an inductance a resistance and a capacitance so we have once again a one junction representing the common flow current in this case and uh, an i element uh, which is uh, representing the inductance Uh, and l is the inductance associated with it we connect this bond to it because the same current passes through this inductance resistance and capacitance and the source so we place uh, we connect it to this next uh, we connect this source again the same way then the c element uh, which is here the capacitance uh, here also the current across is the same and the current through is the same and here we have the uh, resistance r uh, here we have one uh, numbering the bonds identifying them uh, we have numbered the bonds now we place the causal strokes okay so we have got a pattern of causality again almost similar to the previous example and we have the momentum associated with the i element we have uh, q associated with the c element always it's the momentum which will be associated with the i element and generalized displacement associated with the c element this will be true in any energy domain it's only these two elements that will have states momentum and uh, displacement generalized momentum and generalized displacement the other elements will not contribute any state to the system and uh, it, the reason will become clear to you as we proceed further with our discussion so we have uh, the voltage being applied on the electrical side and a part of it goes in changing the flux linkage the rate of change of this flux linkage okay so that is given by p1 dot and the the capacitance it will it will develop a potential across depending upon the related so q2 by c uh, this will be the potential that will be developed and uh, finally here you have r into i this will be 
the potential that is uh, across this resistance. So R multiplied by the current flowing through it will be the potential drop. That's it. Now we also determine what should be the flow variable. Now flow variable is a current and in this circuit the current is actually decided by this inductance. So it is actually equal to the flux linkage divided by the inductance, assuming it to be a linear inductance. Okay. And um, correspondingly you have I here, I here and I here, all flows shown here. Now you can see clearly the transaction of power. You have power coming in, product is V into I. The power that is used by this I element is rate of change of its flux linkage multiplied by the current. The power associated with the C element is uh, Q2 by C multiplied by I and the power that is permanently dissipated, that is Ri into I. Okay, so this is how you get uh, a clear idea of the transaction of power between the elements of a system. Uh, this is in graphical form, uh, but uh, it will become now uh, it will become clear to you. What we have got here is the same bond graph. The structure of the bond graph is the same as what we had in the previous case, which was a mechanical subsystem. So it is the same bond graph and uh, it, it certainly means that bond graph can model in multi energy domains. The same tools can be used to model in different energy domains. Uh, if we take a simple mechanical system um, here, we can take a one junction representing the velocity of this mass. We can take, we can associate the movement, the motion of this mass. So place this I element because it's moving with this velocity. Mass is M. Uh, we apply the force F over here. Now this system could be, uh, this physical system could represent a person using a skateboard it could represent uh, a cam uh, follow system or it could represent a tire on a road system okay it's a very uh, simple system but uh, the other end uh, one end is a mass the other end here could be following the profile of this uh, trajectory which is shown here uh, motion is permitted only about this direction so we are taking we are considering a one dimensional case only in this example so you have the source of effort that is Ft here and uh, you have the velocity associated with it on this one junction. <coughs> on the other side you have the other end but now unlike the previous example where the end was fixed uh, here there is a motion for this end. So we represent it using a one junction V naught of T. Uh, assuming that this end is moving with the velocity V naught at any time T. Uh, here this motion is being imposed by this uh, profile. So we are imposing a motion. So it's a source of flow. Uh, we represent it using an SF. And in this case, the flow, the velocity is given by V naught at T. And here uh, we take, uh, we have to model the spring and damper as well. The other things have been modeled. So we consider a zero junction here, which is going to take the relative motion between the mass and the other end of this. So it is the mass, it is the this velocity is equal to V1 minus V0. So this junction which we have here is actually representing a velocity which is V1 minus V0 uh, given as V1 with respect to 0. And here we say that both C and R 
they have the same motion across the two which is given by this relative velocity so here we assign c and here we assign r the velocity across both of them is the same and so we place it on a one junction here so this uh, example uh, will be explained in more detail to you uh, when we uh, work out the details right now it's just for your uh, as an example to show you a very simple si subsystem modeling so we number the bonds then we causal the subsystems uh, causal the bond bond graph all of them have been causal we'll work out how this uh, causality is done it's very simple uh, the process is very simple and all of you will be able to understand it uh, we have uh, only one i element and a c element the state associated with this i element is momentum is a generalized momentum p1 and the state associated with this c element is the generalized element q2 so this is a model for this system in fact you can derive all the mathematics from this bond graph model you can use this bond graph model for analysis you can use it for control system design for practically everything you can use it for simulation okay uh, i think um, yeah so next topic is causality of sources and junctions uh, i will discuss i will start this topic uh, in our next lecture so that we have a continuity uh, i think uh, if you have any doubts uh, please ask me at this stage uh, we will proceed from here onwards in our next lecture anybody having any doubts or difficulties please don't hesitate to ask